Sustainability. We hear this word all the time, all the, across multiple industries. A quick internet search of the term returned almost two billion results. So we're gonna to explore tonight just a little bit about what that means in relation to food and agriculture. Like most of you today, like most days of your life, you've probably had a couple meals. They were made up of a variety of food groups, fruits, vegetables, grains, proteins, all according to your dietary preferences and choices. Did you ever stop to think about where that food came from, how was it produced, and will it be there tomorrow? Like 98% of the population in the United States, I didn't grow up on a farm or a ranch. I had always been interested in exploring outcomes and understanding the relationship between cause and effect. And as my educational path unfolded, first here at the University of Wisconsin Green Bay Marinette campus, and later at the University of Wisconsin Madison, I came to understand that science in general, and biology specifically, allowed me to explore those relationships between cause and effect. After transferring to the University of Wisconsin Madison, I determined, I, I found agriculture to be where science and biology were at its core. And agriculture also fit one of the other criteria I had for a career, and that was to work in an industry that had a direct and measurable benefit back to society. And there's nothing more foundational to society than food. I've been fortunate to spend the last 30 years of my career engaged directly in the US ag and more recently the Canadian agricultural markets, and I'm passionate about the role agriculture has in society. So with regard to sustainability in, in farming, the word sustainable means to, to maintain a certain rate or level. The other definition is to look at an ecosystem's wide approach and ensure that the needs of today don't jeopardize the ecosystem such that, that it will not be there for tomorrow. There are several multi-generation farm families in the United States today. The current generation is getting more per acre than their grandparents and great-grandparents were and doing it with far less labor. They'll tell you that their farms are sustainable. But sustainability as it relates to agriculture has a specific legal definition. It is a series of practices that are farm specific and work together to ensure that the needs for, of human, the human needs of food and fiber are met that the practices do this in a way that improves the, 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 improves the on-farm and off-farm environment. They also look at efficiently man managing the non-renewable resources, such as the land, incorporating biological cycles and processes, such as, and, and, such as cover crops, crop rotation, and so forth. All these systems come together in a way that is economically viable for the farmer. And they also should improve the lives of the farmer and society as a whole. What sustainable agricultural production practices are not are doing just one thing, like banning the use of synthetic fertilizers and synthetic crop protection products. Unfortunately, we have a recent example of what happens when that's done on a countrywide basis. In April of 2021, the Sri Lanka government adopted policies that banned the importation and use of all synthetic fertilizers and all synthetic crop protection materials. And unfortunately, the results were catastrophic. According to a joint report issued by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization and the World Food Program, the results of those policy decisions to outright ban the use of synthetic fertilizers and synthetic crop protection products caused a catastrophic decline across two harvest cycles, such that the rice harvest was reduced by 40%. This is the main calorie crop for the people of Sri Lanka. The corn crop was reduced by 40%. That was a primary food source for their animals, which provide protein to the people. The results of those policy decisions were a food crisis, an economic crisis that put growers out of business, and a political upheaval and the results of those impacts are still being felt today by the people of Sri Lanka. An August of 2022 report that was issued showed that the year-over-year -year food inflation rate was 94%. Now, fortunately, the government has, re has rolled back those policies and removed the ban, but unfortunately, the damage has already been done. Here in the United States, we enjoy abundant, high-quality, and relatively affordable supply of food. Our farmers and ranchers produce enough food for all of us, and they are critical to supplying the needs of the rest of the world. Our croplands, soil types, climate, 
our inland waterway system and railroad system make getting our annual harvested crops distributed to the rest of the world in a very efficient way, and we're critical to the global food supply. The U.S. population today is about 7.8 billion people. It's expected to grow by 28 percent to 10 billion people by the year 2050. That's just 28 short years from now. We need agricultural advancement technology to meet the needs of the growing population. None of us want to put more land that's currently in ecosystems, natural ecosystems, into land, into land production, so we need to get more out of the farm that we already have under production. The annual crop harvest cycle is as important today as it ever has been throughout human history. Yes, we have better transportation networks, better storage systems, and so forth, but we only need to look at what's happening right now in the world with regard to the conflict in Ukraine. We're seeing pressure on the global wheat supplies because of uncertainty around the future wheat crops. That region is critical for supplying the part of the global needs of wheat. We're starting to see some food inflationary pressures associated with those concerns. We're also starting to see countries change their export policies to make sure that they hold on to this main calorie crop for their own people. The United States has long recognized the importance that agriculture, economies, and productivity has to a strong society. Starting all the way back in 1839, the United States government put in place legislation and infrastructure investments that drove a rapid adoption and advancement of agricultural production technologies in the United States. The University of Wisconsin-Madison, which is the land-grant college here for our state in Wisconsin, was the beneficiary of many of these of many of these investments, and in fact has contributed to the vast body of knowledge available in agricultural production practices today. There has never been a time when more has been known about how to grow crops available to more people in our world. Miles Knowlton said that knowledge is knowing a tomato is a fruit, but wisdom is knowing that a tomato doesn't belong in a fruit salad. So never before has the wisdom to use all of that knowledge been condensed in such a small percentage of our population. Today, under 2% of our workforce is engaged in food and fiber production. So how can we as an industry have conversations about society on sustainable agricultural production practices and the sustainability of our food network? Science is at the heart of agriculture, and there are some truths that cannot be changed. Soil fertility management is absolutely critical to maintaining the non-renewable resources that is our land. Each crop harvest removes nutrients from the soil, and those nutrients must be returned to keep that land productive. Now, sustainable agricultural practices dictate that an all of the above approach is taken. So things like cover crops and manure, and yes, synthetic fertilizers are part of the equation to manage soil fertility. Now, no matter what source is used, best management practices follow the four R's of nutrient management, and that is using the right fertilizer source at the right rate at the right time and at the right place. These practices ensure that the crop get, gets what it needs to maximize harvest while minimizing the off-farm, the, the off-site movement of, of those nutrients. Agricultural technology advancements are absolutely critical in managing the most important non-renewable resource we have, and that's our land. We're seeing ag technology advancements that, that are driving innovations. We're being able to look at what goes on on the farm and integrate all this information together to drive harvest outcomes. So for example, farmers make decisions around soil fertility, tillage, what varieties they plant, what planting dates they use, what pest management tools they use. All of these can be organized around global positioning data coordinates and tied back to yield outcomes. This allows growers to make better decisions even in, in, on an in-field basis and drive productivity gains. Now, additional investments need to be made in, in things such as broadband, high quality rural, uh, access, access to high quality um, internet in rural areas. Climate smart agricultural product, production is, is tying back the soil, sar, the, the soil carbon capture ability um, of agricultural production. And this is an exciting new frontier. The United States Department of Agriculture's Ag Innovation Agenda is, is driving towards increasing per acre farm productivity by 40% while reducing environmental impacts by 50% by the year 2050. One comment I hear often is that organic production means no pesticides are used. That's a myth. Now this is not to take away in any way, shape or form 
from organic production practices. It just means that the, the tools used to manage the crop need to come from natural sources and processes. And it's fantastic that growers have a, consumers have a chance to purchase the products that they grow in a way that they deem necessary, and that growers have a chance to produce a product according to their needs, and that there's a marketplace to bring the two together. But no matter what the source of the crop protection product is, either conventional or organic, or how that crop is produced, soil fertility and pests like insects, diseases, and weeds have to be managed. In an agricultural production system, the source of the materials are from naturally occurring processes um, or, or sources and they are made according to organic industry production standards. But no matter how those products come to market or what the source of them are, the United States Environmental Protection Agency governs all of them. And they look at all aspects of the products, including the human and environmental considerations before registering. Additionally, states also require the use of these materials. Now these tools are, are critical and have been critical in driving farm productivity gains. For example, in the, year 20, in, in the years from 1948 to 2017, we saw a huge increase in the number in the, in the productivity per acre off of our U.S. farms. And these productivity gains were driven largely by the adoption of synthetic fertilizers and synthetic crop protection materials. Over that same period of time, the global population increased by 200%, while the corn harvest, for example, increased by 360%. Ag innovation and technology has driven farm productivity gains, and we need that to continue in the future. In 2015, the United Nations published the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. As part of that process, they identified 17 sustainable development goals that were critical to achieving the desired outcome. Agricultural production practices touch almost all 17 of these sustainable development goals. This has provided a, a framework to have conversations around the line metrics and progress towards attainment of that goal. And they help foster a conversation between our industry and society to show how agricultural production is, is going and how it's sustainable. Weeds are plants growing where they're not wanted. They compete with the crop for soil nutrients, sunlight, and moisture, and they must be managed if a harvest is to be made. Now, those of you that have garden know that if you've got a weed growing in your garden, you can take out a hoe and you can hoe that weed out there. But doing so disrupts the soil surface and it also can disrupt the soil structure. So sustainable agricultural practices look at a holistic approach to managing all aspects of, the, of, of farm production. And herbicide use is part, of sustainable, is, is part of sustainable agricultural production practices. By looking at how we integrate all technologies together, such as herbicides, that allows growers to do things like use conservation tillage, which fosters soil health. Also, we're looking at an, in an industry, we're working in an industry today that spends almost $3 billion working to advance innovation and technology to help growers manage, better, be, manage pests better and protect their crop. We're seeing some changes in these tools that, that are coming out of our industry with more of a focus on biological-based materials. For example, in 2016, we saw twice as many biological-based products come to market as conventional-based products. Soil health focus allows companies to do things like take naturally occurring mycorrhizal fungi, turn those into grower-friendly formulations that can be applied at planting, putting those, putting those microorganisms in the perfect place to form a symbiotic relationship with the plant that helps pull nutrients out of the soil, protect from drought, and increase soil carbon capture. Tying together how all of these tools work together and support the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals will help foster a level of transparency to help society understand how their food is sustainably produced and how we in the industry are helping to support the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Everyone eats every day, and we need our farmers and ranchers to continue to produce the food. We need an all-of-the-above approach to ag innovation and technology to, to meet the needs of the population today and the additional 2 billion people that are expected here in the next 28 years. The world in the United States cannot afford a harvest outcome like the Sri Lankan farmers had. And we all need to get, get engaged and understand how our policies and practices are so that we, we don't have those type of outcomes. I asked you to take some time to learn about how your food is produced sustainably. Take that knowledge, turn it into wisdom, 
and be an advocate for policies that, su that support sustainable agricultural production practices. I think that you'll be happy you did so. Thank you.